Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the Vitamin C's podcast, a proud part of the CLNS Media Network, empowered by FanDuel, America's number one sports book and official gambling partner of CLNS Media. I'm your host, Tim Shields, and I'm joined by my co-host, Wayne Breezy Brown. Wayne, I know yeah. it's difficult. We're talking about another uh, an- another letdown loss, this time at the hands of the Wizards. This is a safe space where we can all share our feelings, our Correct. thoughts on the matter. How are you feeling? What are your takeaways of this game? I mean, this is one of those games where the Celtics just, their, their energy was off. They, they, you know, I can't say that they were missing. They were missing a lot of shots. They were missing threes. They were taking erratic threes to me at weird points. But the, the the most important part of this game to me was they just couldn't stop what the Wizards were doing. They couldn't stop them in the paint. They couldn't stop them from shooting threes. They were late on rotations on defense. When you look at the fast break points, you can see once the Celtics missed, the Wizards were out. They were getting points. I mean, it, it's it's just one of those games where you're just like, dang, another team they play down to. And the thing I don't get, Tim, is why play down to any team at this given moment of time when you can clinch the first seed in the playoffs? And that's what I don't get. You know, you're close. You're right on the uh, heels of the Milwaukee Bucks. You can, you know, gain some some space and closing in on that gap. And they lose a game. And now they're, what, two and a half games back, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half back right now. I mean, it's it's tough. And I think it's it's another example of, similar to what happened earlier on in the season against the Thunder, right? So Thunder didn't have SGA. This time, uh, Bradley Beal is not in the lineup. So a team that is clearly like rebuilding and retooling and very much out of the playoff picture for all intents and purposes, you fail to show up to play against. And it's frustrating because there's been a handful of losses. This gets added to the pile. There's probably about six or seven really, really bad losses where you say, these are teams that they should have beat. And I think it's more frustrating, like you said, when it's happening right now. Like in terms of timing, that was terrible because right now this is, we're recording this on Wednesday, uh, the 29th of March, and Celtics play against the Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow. If the Celtics had taken care of business and beaten the Wizards and the Bucks happened to lose to the Pacers, which also happens today, um, they would have a chance to tie the Bucks. Now, keep in mind, too, this is the final game that these two teams are going to face off. If the Celtics win this or whoever wins this will have the tiebreaker over the other team. So if the Celtics are able to have the same exact record as the Bucks by the end of the regular season and they have that tiebreaker in hand, then they would get the first seed over them. Um, they've got two and a half games up on the 76ers. Um, the Celtics face the 76ers, I believe, after... The game after next, so they're going to play the Bucks, then the Jazz, then the 76ers. Uh, 76ers are on Tuesday, April 4th. It's an 8 o'clock tip. Um, so that's another team that you have to keep an eye on, too. But fortunately, the Celtics are 3-0 and against the 76ers this year. So they have a chance to sweep the season series as well as push them down further in the standings. And the other thing that's good for the Celtics is the Bucks are going to play them on Sunday, April 2nd. So that's another opportunity where it's like, who are you rooting for in this situation? But I guess the moral of the story here is the Celtics kind of put themselves into this position because they failed to close out games and a lot of clutch time games. I've talked about that before, too, with you talking about overtime games where they just let the they let go of the rope. But then you have these kind of losses where it's like these are teams you're supposed to beat. These are supposed to be the easy ones. This is what good teams do. Good teams go out there and they take care of business and they blow out teams that are worse than them. They did so against the Pacers. Um, And this is another team that they should have done the same to. I don't know if it was the travel, being on the road, whatever excuse you want to pull out of the book, but it's deflating and it's, it's sort of a frustrating thing where you've seen this trade out of this team so far. Yeah, look, um, I, I don't know who to blame or what to blame. You could blame traveling. You could blame you know those pink uniforms uh nothing wrong with <laughs> pink but that was that was wild those are loud i like them but they're That's loud a, i actually like them too right but yeah. you know 
I like I like it more in the Miami style because they it's a mixture of colors. Those, so when you see that Miami feature, Vice jerseys, yes, man. those man. are nice. Greatest eighties were some of the good times, you know. But back to Washington, you know, DC wasn't expecting those uniforms. They were super fuchsia, I guess. It's like a, a step up. But anyway, I don't know what caused the Celtics to go blind uh in this particular game. I mean, Tatum finished with 28 as Tatum should. You didn't get the big performance from, you know, Jalen Brown on the offensive end. I mean, he got you 18 points, but at the end of the day, they just couldn't stop Porzingis. And I mean, he was taking shots from all over the court. I mean, he's already seven feet tall and then he was shooting over people. And then they have other three. They were hitting threes relatively early in that first half, which helped them build the lead. And that's kind of what, like, you know, how are we going to come back? And I thought we were going to chirp away. We got that lead cut down to probably like about 10. And I thought maybe we, we'll be able to find a way to push back. Uh, but unfortunately, we just kept taking weird threes instead of mm. just going into the paint. Like, yeah. And and to me, that's the issue. And I feel like, you know, if you ever find yourself trailing in the game, you know, the one thing I love about basketball is that, you know, two minutes is a, a, a substantial amount of time. You know, if you're down by 10, you can still come back and win in two minutes. It's weird to think like two minutes. That's that's no, you can. You just mm-hmm. got to play sound basketball, play great defense try to get some things to go your way. I I'm, I felt like there were a couple of times, Tim, where the refs were just, they were just being NBA officials to where I'm like, dude, come on, you can't call that a foul. And then, you know, they call it a foul the other way. And you'd be like, see, like the, beat, the consistency of that was off a little bit. Not blaming it on that Celtics win 10 for 11 from the free throw line. Uh, but, you know, they when you when, what happens, Tim, when we're not hitting the threes? That that's the key. Celtics are a three point shooting team. You can't shoot forty four, make forty four attempts. You know what I'm saying, and only get off on eleven of them joints. Like that's the issue. Twenty five percent from three is pretty bad. We talked about this where it's just you kind of have to accept that it's a live or die by the three kind of team. But that also comes down to what you're getting out of Joe Mazzula. And I like Joe, and I think the biggest knock that we can probably say pretty convincingly now at this point is his ability to make adjustments and to change lineups and to change approach. They kept doing the same exact thing. That's the definition of insanity is doing the same exact thing again and again and again, expecting a different result. So it's, yeah, I mean, it's the definition of insanity and it look 44 attempts is fine. If you convert on them, it it's a lot of threes, but if you convert on them, it's, it's a totally different game. You know, a few of those fall down and all of a sudden we're, we're talking about a very, very different outcome. But, you know, you, you can't be missing threes and then not getting back on defense. And I think oftentimes they the threes that they were taking, there's a lot of open threes that they just weren't hitting. And so those are good shots. Like by definition, those are good shots. But I want to look at the timing of when they're happening, how many passes happened before those threes were taken. There was a couple times where like, Someone got like a good look at a three, but it was like a two passes into a possession. Yeah. And they were just firing. And I'm like, it's not a bad look. And I don't hate that, but you guys haven't been able to find the bottom of the basket and you're rushing these looks like it, it, not even just the rushing of the look, but like rushing a possession, like work the clock a little bit, trying to actually get inside and attack the paint. They actually outscored the wizards in the paint only 64 to 62, and that's kind of what also screwed them because Christoph Porzingis has like an amazing game, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden now the Wizards are looking at trying to extend him and Kuzma. I don't know if that's the best decision for their uh, franchise, but Porzingis has started to turn his career around, especially after that rough stint in Dallas where he kind of became, you know, the fall guy for all of their issues. Massachusetts, listen up. The wait is over. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is now live in Massachusetts, and new customers in Mass can get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. Finally, you can bet on all your favorite sports teams from the money line to point spreads to player props and more. For me personally, I'm not much of a game-to-game guy. However, I am looking at the Celtics and the Bruins to go to the distance, so I put myself a nice little parlay on both those teams, and here's hoping that hits. 
So, bet now on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss your chance to get $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make every moment more on America's number one sportsbook. 21 plus and present in MA. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued on non-withdrawable bonus bets that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. The Wizards are a team that are going to be rebuilding, and they kind of are in the midst of that. You know, they traded away Rui Hachimura to the Lakers. So that's a team, like, by definition, that the Celtics should have come out and beaten. And I know that Tatum just came back. Still, that three ball is not there. He was 2 of 7, 4 of 4 from the line, 11 of 19 from the field. So I think he needs to stop taking threes and to just attack the basket. Uh, seven threes when he's trying to find that rhythm. I get it, like, he hits one more, and all of a sudden it just seems a little bit better. But I I can't be seeing two a seven, two a eight, two a nine from three in games where you know you're losing by double digits against teams that you should beat. And it's just frustrating to see that kind of same thing happen again and again. It again, <laughs> the definition of insanity insane. is doing the same exact thing. And so it's just the Celtics got to make these adjustments, right? And I think there's still time to do it. I don't think this loss is damning. It's just. At the end of the day, is seeding the most important thing? To me, no, and it doesn't seem to be to the team. So I'm interested to see what happens there and how do they approach these last few games. Like, if you lock down the two seed, do you start resting, guys? Right. I would lean towards yes. Right. If it's a lock, right, if it's a lock. But if you're playing for a two seed, you know, we say that seeding is not the most important thing, and that's fair, right? I don't think the Celtics want to fall to the third seed. And, you know, if they find a way they can close the gap on the number one seed, why not go into the playoffs with the number one seed and home court advantage throughout the playoffs? Like, why not? So that's a big thing. So maybe it's not end all be all or most important thing on their docket, but you don't want to lose games that you clearly should go out and, and, and dominate. Like, look, I'm not taking away from any of the NBA players on the Washington Wizards. That is not what Wayne Breezy is doing here. What I'm trying to say is this. The Celtics got better players. And now that night, they didn't play better. And they got beat. And, and they got beat on defense. So it's not like they didn't put up 111 points. But they gave up 130 points to a team that's not scoring 130 points a night. It's not like they averaged that a night. The Wizards shot really well. And they worked the inside game. And they just took advantage. And once the Celtics went down big, they didn't stop applying the pressure. I wonder this, though, Tim. At what point, if you're Joe Missoula, would you start shrinking this rotation? At what point? Or do you not? Do you just let it rock out all the way into the playoffs before you make that type of an adjustment? Because that's an adjustment, too. And it seemed like maybe, maybe, the Celtics were prepared for a Bradley Bill type of dynamic of a game and were less prepared for a Chris Stapp Porzingis dynamic type of game. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I, In terms of rotations, we've kind of seen him break out a couple different times where all of a sudden you're seeing guys like Blake Griffin go out. You're seeing Grant Williams be in the mix, Mike Muscala being out, you know, outside looking in. So we've, we've seen a couple times now where, he started to tweak these rotations. So I think he has like an, a solid eight man rotation to go to in the playoffs. Um, so you've got your standard five, you've got the Jays, you've got Marcus smart, you've got Derek white, you've got Rob, you've got Al that's six right there already. You got Brogdon and probably grant that's right there. So Sam Hauser might be in the mix there. Mike Muscala might be in the mix there, depending on matchup situations. So uh, uh, probably at the minimum, you're looking at an eight man rotation with grant Williams kind of picking up its play as of late. Come, he had a bad turnover, I think, in that Wizards game towards the end of it that kind yeah. of sort of killed the momentum. But yeah. again, like you, you don't put yourself in that situation, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, I was at darts and I, I watched the game at the bar that I was throwing at, and it's just frustrating to see them kind of fall into those ruts where I just don't think that you're playing with the right pace, the right energy, and you've seen this other team just come down and just hit some threes. You know, Corey Kispert lit you guys up, and just failing to try and answer that. And so 
I don't know how much I want to chalk up to, you know, travel and everything like that. And when it comes down to seeding, you do have to start wondering, you know, are, are you better off just resting guys and getting guys who aren't going to be in your playoff rotation some minutes? That way you can actually rest some other dudes. And it might come down to that, honestly. Like Celtics, again, will have the tiebreaker over the 76ers, regardless of what happens for Correct. the rest of the season. Correct. So if it does come down to a situation where you're going to be close to them to the two or three seed, I, I say that you start resting guys because at, at this point now and this point in time, and I kind of felt like it was supposed to happen during that Wizards game, like they should have been pulling guys out earlier. In, in a in a double digit loss, Tatum had 32 minutes. Jalen right. had about 27. Al had 26. Derek White had 24. Marcus Smart had 30. Rob had 15. Brogdon had 23. Grant Williams had 26. So if it's going to get that ugly, send a message to these guys because they know better at this point in time to bring the effort, even if it is against a team that you don't necessarily feel threatened by. And I just like, I don't think that the seating is important to them. And I, that's okay. It's yeah. just like have the expectation, like going into these games. I think from like a from like a fan and reporter, pers- a fan and reporters' uh, perspective, like just don't expect them to be all that concerned. Okay, it, it sucks. Like it, it sucks. Do I want them to get the one seat? Sure, but ultimately you're going to have to win on the road one way or another. Facts. It's just you you took your foot off the accelerator earlier on in the season. I think that Warriors game kind of sent them spiraling back in December. It did. And so it kind of threw them off. And even still, like they're, they're seven, seven and nine or se- seven wins in their last nine games, I think. So, you know what? They've been solid. You're right. I mean, seeding doesn't matter. And I'm okay with them not really worried about the seeding because they know, excuse me, on any given night how they can come out and they have, you know, perform. Here's my thing, though don't show up with less lack of energy. And make sure you're 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 sticking to the game plan. And the game plan doesn't necessarily have to be three point, three point, three point, three point. We were getting good looks last night. They just weren't falling. And so it's just like at some point, you know, you gotta, you know, where's the leaders? I saw Tatum taking it to the inside. Jalen, I don't know who's a better finisher in the league. You know, I mean, Donovan Mitchell may be one, but Jalen Brown's a pretty darn good finisher, man. He was getting to the rim. He was stopping and going and working around like he was Mr. Fantastic and getting to the rim. They weren't calling fouls, but I like that that ability for him to figure out, hey, man, shots aren't falling. Let me get to the rim. The other players need to pick up on that. I don't need Marcus mm. Smart pulling up in transition, just popping the three point shot. Bro. Oh man, he had a couple that were rough. And I was <laughs> I just, like, I was, and I was like, it's not a bad look. I'm just like, you're taking it way too early in the shot clock. But then, but then, Tim, here's what pissed me off. I love Marcus Smart. You know this, but he had a wide open layup and he kicked it out to Grant Williams. He missed the three. It was nobody but him and the rim. He was literally at the rim for a finger roll, fakes pass it to Grant in the corner, and Grant just happens to miss the three. Grant got the rebound, but then we turned it over. I, yeah. I, I just don't understand. Get the short basket. The threes will come. Yeah, and that's, like, ultimately what it comes down to. I get it in terms of, like, the math. Like, taking more threes and hitting more threes means more buckets, which means more wins. Like, Fantastic. Except when those threes aren't falling, you need to be able to lean back on something. And it that comes down to Joe making adjustments or lack thereof. And I, he's so rigid in this belief. There needs to be a little bit of give and take there. Like, he's so dedicated and fixated on, on shooting the three. Like, that is, like, the focal point of this offense. So when that doesn't happen and those threes don't fall – and they're not getting back on defense. Like they got killed in transition in terms of the differential. I think it was 19 to 11 in terms of fast break points. That's a big difference in a game like this against a team that, again, lesser teams have to hustle. Like if you don't have the talent, you got to hustle both offense and defense. You got to get out and run. You got to get to basketball. Exactly. And that's what, that's what the Wiz did. Like that's what the Wizards did to you. That's what these teams are doing. That's what mm. if you look at all the Celtics losses on the season, they got beat by getting out hustled, outworked, and out gritted. Literally. 
we're just not that gritty of a team. We're a pretty team. We're shooting, splash, splash, splash. When we're hitting, it's all point. We're not the freaking Golden State Warriors when they used to splash all the time. That's not who we are. I feel like that's part of the identity of a Joe Mazzulla. That's kind of like what he's looking for. I just don't think we're built that way. That doesn't mean Tatum and 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 Brown can't hit threes. I just don't think that should be their game plan. They are finishers. They can get to the rim. Look at their size. They're not forwards. They're not guards. They're positionless. And if they have the ability because their size to get to that rim, they need to get to the rim. I'm okay when they shoot, but when stuff isn't falling, they have to figure out, you know, when to turn it on. I mean, even Al Horford was missing early. Yeah. He a couple of big threes. Like I said, the Celtics got this game down where you felt like, oh, here comes the comeback. And then there's a, a, a boo-boo made. It's a, it's a, it's it's the fake comeback, right? It's the fake <laughs> out. It's it's the carrot or the stick. Keep it's watching the, the TV. It's Lucy, it's Lucy with the football, right? <laughs> you know, you get set up to hit it and just pulls it out in the last second, right? It, it, it stings. It stings. Those just kind of losses bit. are gonna hurt, but just a little bit. You know, it, I have to try and keep it in perspective so much because getting this outraged out, like games like this when they happen, it it gets exhausting, and. You know, it's a Tuesday against the Wizards. Like, mm-hmm. I don't blame them for not having intensity, but like, just don't. I just don't want to see the same thing happen again and again. And I'm fine with it being an ugly win. Like, good teams find ways to win games when things get ugly and they're bad. And that should have been a game where you do that, where you do get nitty gritty, where you do get into the paint. And I think for the Jays specifically, trying to get to the rim should be their focus yeah. because not everybody on this team can do that. You know, Sam Hauser started to add that little wrinkle to his game and he's better than I expected doing that, but he's still not someone that I would lean on heavily off of the bench. Grant Williams tried to add that to his game as well, being able to put the ball to the floor, and get into the paint. I still prefer him as a three point threat. So the Jays kind of need to lead the charge on that because they soften up the interior defense and it pulls people away from the perimeter. You know, so like that's kind of what you have to do. It, it, that's a in, it's a yeah, it's an inside out game. Like you soften up their interior defense, they're gonna have to bring people in to try and match that. The Jays are always gonna if they're if the Jays start getting hot, they're always gonna pull two guys, and so that needs to be a focus moving forward in some of these games. I think ultimately, like when the when the pressure is gonna be the highest, I think this is a team that's gonna hit threes, and I don't think that will be a problem. But ultimately, I think they've put themselves in this kind of position where they no longer control their fate. And I think that sucks. That's the one thing that kind of sucks. But if, if they land in two, let's just like hypothetically just go through it. If they land in two. Where they, who, who are they facing as of right now? As of right now, they're in second place. They would be going against the Nets. Who have their 14 games back of first. Um, the Miami Heat are a half game back of the Nets. So right now it's probably going to either be the Nets or the Heat. Um, for that game, Heater in seventh, so they'd be right now. They're in the play-in. Hawks are after them in eighth, sixteen and a half back. So uh, two games back of the Heat. Raptors are also sixteen and a half back of first, so they're tied with the Hawks in terms of losses or or um, record, thirty-eight and thirty-eight. So literally straight up a five hundred team. And after that, you get the Bulls, who are thirty-six and thirty-nine, and they're clinging on to dear life for that last spot. They're two and a half games ahead of the Wizards. So the Wizards are like outside looking in on that play in. So if it ends up being the Nets, that's not a terrible first round uh, matchup. I, I I don't think I like it though. I don't like it, but again, like I don't care if they don't have Kyrie or Kevin Durant. Now they're that scrappy team. Yeah. The well, and that's the thing they got. It, it's, it's house money at that point. Yeah. It reminds me of earlier Celtics teams when they when were they rebuilding. Just come in. Yeah. And, and, and you're just like, screw it. Like there's zero expectations for us. Bingo. Like <laughs> just going to go out here and play our game. And the Celtics need to be ready for that. And I think they will be. Okay. But I agree. I also think that the, generally the Jays do not like the Nets as an organization. Um, I don't think the Celtics like the Nets as an organization. No. So I, I, think I get where you're going with this. But, but my point is the Celtics struggle against teams with – Good athletic bigs, quick and fast point guards. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's who they struggle against. That's all season. They've been struggling against those two types of teams. I can't tell you what the Nets are going to bring other than grit. And so they still have three-point shooting, but they have a bunch of no-name players now. 
that are trying to make a name for themselves. And why not go all out every single night and try to knock out the Celtics? So see, for, and I'm not saying the Celtics should be scared. I'm just saying the Celtics can't show up to that game like they did in Washington. They got to be ready. Well, yeah. and more so, they, they can't show up like they did against the Nets earlier in the season where you're blowing the doors off of them and then you just take your foot completely off oh, the just, gas. Oh, you took about a few weeks ago? When we watching- oh, yeah. Yeah. That one. You remember that one. Freak. <laughs> Big lead and then – and there was no – I can't even tell you who played for the Nets. This was this was Kyrie less and KD less. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith and Mikel nobody. Bridges are the two ones that I think. And hey, no, no, no. I'm not going to disrespect I'm Dorian Finney-Smith. He's a nice piece. My point is they're not – at the it's, caliber yeah. of what we have. Yeah. Well, and exactly. And that that's where effort comes in. Like hard hard work beats out talent every day of the week. Dear like dear. that's what it's gonna come down to. Clip that. Clip it's that. It's true, but it's true. Like, it I mean, true. like Kobe Clip said that. that stuff. Kobe said that stuff hey, too. Man, that's why he so, was one of the greatest to ever play. The yeah. Game. Well, it's effort, you know. So I think that's gonna ultimately that's what's gonna decide these playoff series. And I think the Celtics are ready for the playoffs. I mean, we saw them go out and they beat Sacramento. Granted, Sacramento, second leg of a back-to-back. We talked about that, but it's still a very, very good team. The best offense in basketball. Right, Tim? Like, convincingly, they beat the Kings. I mean, it it was back and forth at the beginning, but they found a way to pull away. And, you know, look, I'm not gonna tie up all the time about losing to the Washington Wizards, but up next is the Bucks, and they just gotta go out there. And I feel like, again, that's a team that they don't play down on. So the only concern that I have about the the Milwaukee Bucks is it's not Giannis. I know he's their best player on the team. It's not their supporting cast. I feel like Chris Middleton, I'm not saying he's, it just seems like he's taken a slight decline ever since he came back from his injuries. Not the same. Not healthy. Yeah. That seems to be his theme song at this point. And, And I knew it wasn't just me watching. I'm like, this is not the same Chris. Like, you know what I mean? But they do have a Drew Holiday. And Drew Holiday is a lot. He's, he's just like the key to the ignition, right? And so don't let him have a day. We let him have a day the last time they ended up winning. Even though the game come, came down to the end, it's just that he had a day. If you could figure out not let him have a day, I could live with Giannis 35 points a game, blah, 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 and whatever. But just don't let Drew have a day. He dictates where that ball mo- where the ball goes. He's not afraid to shoot at any, on any spot on the court. Like, Drew is a baller, and he gives our point guards, he's a point guard, right? He's given us, he has size, and he gives our point guards problems. And so, you know, Marcus Smart's going to have a day against Drew Blitz. I mean, damn it, against Drew Holiday. <laughs> hey, man, I love Drew Bledsoe. Yeah. But no, Drew, Drew Holiday, I mean, I remember when he turned it on in that game, the overtime game against the hospital Celtics, and he looked good doing it. And he's one of those guys where I think when he's locked in, he is very, very, very tough to guard um, because he plays two way basketball as well. He's a really, really good defender. And I remember back when they actually acquired him, it seemed like a really high asking price. But it turns out that he was really the missing link. I know that the Bucks look back on letting uh, Malcolm Brogdon go in free agency and they regret that. And this is kind of their way to supplement that. Um when they ch- when they chose to keep guys like Eric Bledsoe, um, who's now over in China or something like that, so you know, I think right now, in terms of just going into this Bucks game, it, it's sort of kind of like a teaser for the playoffs. Right. And I want to see how these rotations go out. You don't want to show your hand too early to them, but in terms of how the Bucks are playing the Celtics and how the Celtics respond. I think the Celtics are one of the better teams defensively against Giannis. So I want to see how they kind of contain him um, and how they kind of dig on defense. It'll be an interesting game. I'm not going to go ahead and like get two overreactions about it, but I think if ultimately the Celtics stay in that two seed, that's fine. As long as they're ready to show up against whoever ends up being their first round matchup, whether it be the Nets or I hope it's not Miami. I'm hoping Miami somehow slips to eight. So uh, they can give whoever is going to be in the one seed a run for their money um, because that would be pretty cool. And I think it'll make for a good round series as well for a first round series. Besides that, is there anything else you got for us today, Wayne? No, but Drew Holiday, don't let him have a day. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. That's fair enough, man. Fair (laughs) enough. It's frustrating seeing guys go off like that. But anywho, um, so this has been another Uh, episode of vitamin c's podcast again part of the clns media network and powered by fanduel 
America's number one sports book and official sports book partner of CLNS. Uh, I am your host, Tim, joined by Wayne Breezy. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace. Peace. Sign up at fanduel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet.